Well, welcome back to Lock Arbor Astro. On this video, um, I'm going to answer a couple of questions that have been sent through the channel. And uh, thanks very much for those that are responding to the videos. It's much appreciated to know that people are actually using them. Um, it's in relation to the process icons that I've got down the right hand side of the screen and how to uh, produce them. Um, how to store them and, uh, and how to organize them. So I thought I'd put together just a short video explaining that for us today. So first off, the process icons down here that, uh, that I've got laid out, the way I've laid them out is um, in relation to my normal workflow. So you can see the, the upper um, icons here they're all when the image is in the linear phase so cropping uh, background extraction background neutralization linear fit blur exterminator and binning and then i come on to the stretch side of it and curves star exterminator etc and then a separate section for um, bringing out the finer detail uh, sharpening the images up um, and then finally the noise extraction and um, uh, pixel math and then put in the or resizing the image at the bottom uh, these ones down at the the very bottom here are uh, pixel math um, codes or scripts uh, that do various different things the, uh, the star reduction methods here were put together by uh, somebody else um, uh, as were the um, the masks, the colour masks here, and uh, I'll try and get a link for these uh, and put them onto uh, the bottom of the video for you. So the the thing with these process icons is they only actually work with the processes; um, they don't work with scripts. So if you use a script quite often. Um, then I mean I I tend to use the correct magenta stars and um, dark structure enhance. I can't um, open one of these up and create an icon for it. Unfortunately, it only works with the processes. So what I'm going to do is um, go on to my uh, workspace two because that one's currently free of any process icons. And we'll create some icons and put them into like a menu format here. So up to processes, all processes, and the first one I'm going to start with is my dynamic crop. So I've opened up the dynamic crop window, and you'll see the first instance uh, triangle down in the bottom left-hand corner here. If you right-click on that and drag it across into the center of the screen, let go and there's your process icon button. At the moment it says it's process 47. Now you've got two small buttons on the icon itself. One is a D. If you click on that it opens up a description uh, button or a description window which allows you to put in any description that you want to. You can save that or remove it and you've got a rename button or N on there. That opens up the identifier so you can re rename the button itself. So for this I'm going to go down crop and OK and you can see the name on the button has changed to down crop. There's a second way of doing that if you ho highlight sorry if you hover over um, the button itself and then right click on it then you get a choice of instructions that comes up and there's your set icon identifier in there. You'll also notice here is uh, delete, uh, delete the uh, dynamic crop icon as well. So if you want to remove it from your list, um, if you decide that you don't use it so much and don't want, to, uh, don't want it in there anymore, you can just click on that and it removes it. I'll just set her up again and I'll, I'll use that form to create 
create it. When you're actually creating the, the new identifier, um, you can't use any spaces uh, within the name. Uh, so it's got to be without spaces or character. Um, it does numbers. I'm not sure about special characters. Spaces it certainly doesn't do. If I put a space between Dine and Crop and then try and save that, it gives me an invalid identifier. So if I remove the space, then it lets me save it. So you can have a play around with that and name it as you require. Once you've renamed it, you can just left click on it and move the button up into the process icon area and get rid of the window. If we open up a second one, so we do automatic background extraction, create the new icon, identify it. I've put a one after this one because I've already got ABE um, saved on my other set of icons. So we'll pick that one up and we'll drop it down over there. And I'll put a couple of extra ones in there. Do GHS again, even with GHS, it's a much bigger window, but it still works exactly the same way. And then I can move it down over there, and I think I'll do one more. So let's throw an RGB combination in there. Just for good measure. This time we'll do that. Way. There we go. And put it over there. So I've done four of them there. Uh, if I want to line them up, you can. You can. Should add that you can put as many in to this area as you want because you can expand the area over to the um, to the left I tend to try and just keep the one um, the one line of icons in there to give me maximum workspace but um, if you want to expand it out and use uh, two two works different workspaces you can oops you can line them up however you want to it's entirely up to you and if I right click in this area I can do arrange icons and it will arrange them for me in one long line and you can chop and change these around however you want to it doesn't matter about the orientation of them or where you put them you can do the alignment there, um, do it that way, or you can expand this out, and I tend to do it manually. Because I've got so many icons, I don't like keeping gaps between them. I can fit more in with no gaps, so I tend to close them right up, and that's fine. When you're satisfied that you've got, uh, got it where you want it, if you come up to Processes, across to Process Icons, and then save process icons and it will save a small file to wherever you want to save it and when you re when you shut down PixInsight all of the process icons disappear so when you restart uh, PixInsight the next time you need to come once it's started then you come into um, processes process icons and load process icons and that will open up your little thing there click open and it says that I've already got them uh, there we go it's overwritten what I've just done so if I go back to my other one uh, to the other works uh, workspace then all of my icons are in there so that's not a problem 
So I hope that was handy for you and sort of explains how the process icons are put together, uh, the way that I've laid them out. Obviously, you can lay them out however you want to, what's whatever is convenient for you. I've tended to group them together because it uh, helps me re remember my workflow each time. But um, that's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. I hope it's been useful to you. And if you've got any other um, issues or questions, then please put them in the, uh, the comments below. And uh, I'll speak to you next time. Clear skies.